It's been a busy week for me, so this episode might be a little bit shorter than normal, but basically I want to give you a few advanced tips on dealing with active record queries in Rails 3. Now if you haven't already, be sure to check out episode number 202 where I cover what has been added to Rails 3 as far as active record queries go, but here I'm going to show you some more advanced tips on how to deal with it and kind of continue on uh, from that episode. So we have a product model here, which has a couple name scopes. One is discontinued, which just does a search condition for all the discontinued products. Another one is cheaper than, and that just finds all products which are cheaper than a given price argument that's passed in here. Now the first thing I want to show you here is that if you're ever using a lambda inside your name scope, you might want to consider using a class method instead especially if you're passing in a lot of arguments or the content of the scope is pretty complex. Here is pretty simple, but I'll wanna, I wanna show you this anyway here. So what we would do here is just create a class method called cheaper than, and then have it take an argument, and then just return this where clause inside of here. And that'll basically do exactly the same thing as that scope. So you can kind of do this in Rails 2 as well, but I find Rails 3 it works a lot better because this behaves basically exactly like a name scope would. You can even use this in the nesting of the name scopes too. So let's say for example, we have a scope we want to define called cheap, and then we just want to find all products cheaper than a certain price. In this case, let's say $5. So cheaper than $5, and that way we don't have to pass an argument into that cheap name scope call. But this right here will not work because cheaper than this method has not yet been defined in this class when this line gets executed. So one little gotcha here, if you do want to nest scopes through class methods like this, then just be make sure to define it after that class method has been defined. We can even try this out in the console and see that we have a product.cheap scope which goes through that class method and just finds all the products which are cheaper than $5. And we'll just convert this to SQL and you can see that SQL query there. And if we just run it without that, it'll return all the products which are cheaper than $5. Now while we're in the console here, I wanna show you another really cool trick that has to deal with using scopes through associations. So right now I have another model called category and category has many products. So what I can do is call joins on this, say products, and that will give us basically a query which does an inner join of products because category has many products. Now let's say I wanna find all the categories which match some kind of product scope. So maybe all the categories which have a product which is less than $5 in them. And to do this join, there's a couple methods. There's one called merge on the um, any kind of active record relation object, which is a name scope basically, or the ampersand I can use. And both of these are the same method, they're alias to the same thing. And so I, if I just use the ampersand, what it will do is I can join any other queries even if they're not in the same model. So I can say product.cheap, and that will find all the categories which contain that uh, name scope for that product. So as you can see here, it returns a couple categories. If I do a two SQL on here, you can see it does an inner join and it's just add, appending that where clause for the product.cheap uh, inner uh, name scope. So this can get really powerful when I'm using this technique inside a name scope definition. For example, here I am in the category model. What I can do is define a new name scope here. Let's call it uh, with cheap products and then add a condition clause here of a joins, join our products association, and then use that ampersand again, call product.cheap, and now it will find all the categories with cheap products in them. So now I have that join performing inside a scope, so it's convenient um, with cheap products. Just a great way to find all the products, or all the categories containing cheap products in them. One thing to be aware of when you're dealing with conditions across associations is the table name. In this case, our price column here it does not specify in the products table. And this would be a problem if our category table had a price column because it would be disambiguous and cause problems in our SQL query. So what we want to do here is make sure to prepend the table name here. And so we can add that inside our products model here, just prepend the products table name. And that way, just in case the column is used elsewhere in an associated join table, 
we don't have problems. Now, I recommend you do this whenever you are dealing with strings, SQL strings, in your find conditions. Um, if you are dealing with a hash like we are up here, you don't have to worry about it because Rails will automatically add the table name. Now, the next thing I want to show you has to deal with building records through name scopes. So remember, we have a product model with a discontinued um, name scope. And so that just finds the discontinued products. Now, remember, this is using a hash of where the discontinued attribute is true. And because we're using a hash, we can use the build method on this. And that will actually build a new product. Let's assign this to a variable where the discontinued attribute is true because that is an attribute of the where condition. So this, in a sense, kind of behaves like an association would, where when you're calling build on the association, it automatically assigns the foreign key that's associated to that given record. But here we're actually just assigning the attributes to find in the where condition. So it's kind of a handy thing to do if you are needing to build records which match a certain um, name scope. I'm going to finish off this episode by introducing Errol. Now, Errol is really what drives active record queries under the hood. And you probably won't need to interact with it directly very often, but it really helps if you have an understanding of how it works and you can kind of um, know what it's capable of in case you ever need to use it. Now, to use Errol directly in Rails 3, you can access what's called an Errol table, and I'll assign that to the T variable. So let's say for our product model, we'll fetch the Errol table for this. And this is just a representation of the product's table. And then we're able to access specific columns or attributes on this table by, by passing it into square brackets. So let's say we have our price column here, and there's a representation of that column. Now the cool thing is we're able to call methods on this attribute to perform certain find conditions. So let's say we want um, a find condition where our price is equal to some other value, such as 299. And now this returns what's called as a predicate, which is basically just that find condition. But there are a lot of other methods we can call on these attributes too, such as matches, which will perform a like SQL query call. Uh, we'll say um, like Catan. And then if we call to SQL on this, for example, it'll return what the SQL string would represent. Or we can just look at the predicate. We can even use the OR method to string predicates together. So we can say price is equal to 299 or the name matches Catan. And there we go. So now we have a combined predicate, which we can check out the SQL query, and it looks correct. Now you can use any predicates inside of an active record where call. So we can perform this predicate here that we set up where its price is either 299 or the name matches Catan, and pass this into product.where, <clears throat> and then it will return all the products which match that. We can map these by name just so we can get a cleaner representation. So we have two products here which match either one of those conditions. And I've only really scratched the surface here. Errol is capable of a lot more. It's really powerful. But Active Record only reveals a little bit of Errol and allows you to interact with it through that. So um, you can either interact with it directly like I show here, but that's a little bit cumbersome. There are several plugins coming out now that take the power of Errol and put it in a more usable, convenient interface, such as this one here called Metaware. And this will basically allow you to access the Errol's methods, such as matches or greater than, inside the conditions hash. So you basically just call them on the symbols that you're passing into um, the conditions where clause. So this way you're able to have a lot more flexibility in how the conditions hash is defined. You're not just dealing with the equals um, predicate. You're dealing with, you know, you can do matches, greater than, less than, and a lot more. So check it out. And that's it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed this more in-depth look at active record queries inside of Rails 3.